There was the ancient web. Picture this. You're at a desk in 1995, staring at a beige monitor, a mouse with an actual rolling ball you had to clean. You click, connect to internet, and a robot that sounds like it's summoning demons starts dialing a landline. Every time you connect, the house phone became useless. If someone picked it up mid-connection, everything died instantly. You had to earn the internet. And when you finally got in, you entered AOL, the center of the early digital universe. Chat rooms felt like portals. Teen hangouts, rock music groups, primitive RP fantasy worlds where people acted like wizards through text. Every conversation started with ASL, age, sex, location. That's how you found your tribe. And that you've got mail alert. That was dopamine before Silicon Valley learned how to weaponize it. Then there were geocities, blinking neon text, glitter backgrounds, pixel art buttons, MIDI music autoplay and visitor counters proudly at 15 views. People built Sailor Moon fan pages, UFO conspiracy hubs, personal journals, random family photo galleries, anything they could imagine. No influencer culture, no content strategy. People built websites because creating something on the internet felt like magic. Downloading a single song took half an hour. Patience wasn't optional. It was baked into the experience. No algorithms tracking your behavior, no endless feeds. Pure, chaotic, unforgettable. 2. Web 1.0 After the ancient web came Web 1.0, where information lived. But still one-sided. You weren't here to post, you were here to look, learn, and leave quietly. Web 1.0 was a digital library. Pages were carved in static HTML. You didn't comment or share. Those words didn't exist online yet. You just stared at text and thought, wow, the future is crazy. Every site felt like a flyer on a digital corkboard. If you wanted new information, you manually hunted for it, link by link, hoping you didn't hit a 404 error, a digital cave collapse. Search engines? We had Ask Jeeves, the polite internet butler who barely understood anything. You typed, why is the sky blue? And Jeeves would hand you a website selling toy kites. We respected it anyway. Yahoo directory was the actual map. Hand curated categories like sports, science, cool stuff, mystery. Forums existed, but they were quiet temples of knowledge. Conversations unfolded over days. If you replied too fast, people assumed you cared too much. Loading images was a ceremony. Pictures appeared slowly from top to bottom, like a digital Polaroid developing. If your connection hiccuped, you got a half-loaded face staring at you forever. Nightmare fuel and nostalgia. Then everything changed with the social revolution. Web 2.0 3. Web 2.0 Websites stopped being billboards and became platforms. You could post, comment, upload, react, tag, chat, share, like, subscribe. For the first time, the internet didn't just show the world, it became the world. MySpace let you build a profile like a digital bedroom. Autoplay emo music, glitter backgrounds, your top eight friends like a tiny political battlefield. Then Facebook, initially for college students only. You used your real name, real identity, real connections. Your wall became your broadcast channel. Your like became currency. And then YouTube. April 23rd, 2005. First upload, me at the zoo. 19 seconds of a co-founder talking awkwardly in front of elephants. One camcorder, one idea, and you could reach the planet. For the first time, famous people weren't chosen, they were uploaded. A teenager's bedroom video got more views than NBCC. That was the shift. Comments became culture. Forums evolved into Reddit. Status updates evolved into Twitter. Humor became memes. The internet stopped being a tool and became a stage, diary, marketplace, battlefield, and identity factory all at once. But there was one final tether to cut. The internet still lived mainly on your desktop. Not until June 29, 2007. 4. The Mobile Web The first iPhone hit the world and suddenly the internet traveled with you. Using Wi-Fi and slow 2G networks, people could check emails, browse Safari, Photos took forever to upload. Pages required pinching and scrolling. But behavior shifted overnight. You didn't go online, you carried it. A bus ride became an opportunity to check messages. 
a street corner, a chance to find a restaurant. The App Store launched in 2008, Instagram hit in 2010, and reached 1 million users in two months. Your phone wasn't just a tool, it was your camera, your social life, your identity. The internet didn't just fit in your pocket, it merged with your physical reality. 5. The Corporate Web You typed a question into Google and results appeared instantly. You sent a message on Facebook and it reached your friend immediately. You ordered from Amazon and it arrived on time. To you, it just worked. What you didn't see was the massive corporate web running quietly behind the scenes. Google wasn't just a search box. Inside, engineers used Bigtable and MapReduce to organize billions of web pages across thousands of servers, processing petabytes of data to make searches feel instant. Facebook had private dashboards monitoring millions of accounts in real time. Amazon's corporate intranet coordinated warehouses, inventory, and shipping. When you clicked Buy Now, warehouse robots received instructions, shipping labels printed, delivery routes optimized, all within seconds. These aren't conspiracy networks, they're massive private infrastructure. Cities within cities, running on their own protocols. Netflix's content delivery systems, Uber's real-time dispatch, Spotify's recommendation algorithms, all corporate web. The internet you see in the storefront. The corporate web is the warehouse running 24-7 in the background. 6. Web 3.0 By the late 2000s, the internet felt complete. But some innovators asked, what if the internet could operate without central authorities? That idea became Web 3.0. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto introduced Bitcoin. For the first time, you could send money online without banks or governments as middlemen. In 2014, Ethereum appeared with smart contracts, automated agreements on the blockchain. Developers created decentralized apps, NFTs, and communities no single company could control. In 2021, a Beeple NFT sold for $69 million at Christie's. Revolutionary or ridiculous, it happened. Web 3.0 promises an internet where control is distributed across everyone participating, instead of concentrated in Silicon Valley servers. Whether it delivers or becomes another bubble is still being written, but billions of dollars are moving through it right now. 7. Deep Web You're probably on the deep web right now. Checked your email today? Deep Web. Logged into your bank? Deep Web. Streamed Netflix? Deep Web. This is the 96% of the internet Google can't see because it's behind passwords and paywalls. Banking systems, medical records, government archives, subscription journals, company intranets, all deep web. When you log into your bank or check lab results, you're there. Your Gmail inbox has thousands of emails, but Google search can't index them because they're private. Your Dropbox files, Slack messages, Zoom recordings, all deep web. The deep web isn't mysterious, it's mundane. It's just the private internet, the part that requires you to log in. Now beyond this, there is a more shadowy network where anonymity is law. That's the dark web. 8. Dark Web The dark web is hidden and anonymous. You need special tools like the Tor browser, which masks your identity and location. Here's what most don't know. Tor was built by the US Navy for intelligence operatives who needed secure communications. It was released as open source software, becoming a tool for whistleblowers, activists, journalists, and criminals. The dark web became infamous for Silk Road, processing over $1.2 billion in transactions before the FBI shut it down in 2013. But it's also where WikiLeaks published sensitive documents, where journalists in authoritarian regimes communicate safely, and where activists organize without surveillance. In China, Iran, and Russia, the dark web is often the only way to access uncensored information. The dark web isn't inherently evil. It's a double-edged sword a refuge for free speech, and a marketplace for stolen data. It's a parallel internet, some parts protective, some perilous. All right, stop. Everything up until now, real, documented, verifiable. What comes next is different. We're entering territory where fact and fiction blur. Some of what follows is grounded in classified technology. Some is internet mythology. Stories about what might be lurking in the deepest corners. I won't lie and say I know these layers exist, but I won't pretend they're pure fantasy either. Think of this as exploring the mythology of the internet, 
the stories that reveal what we believe about hidden knowledge and digital power. Let's go deeper. 9. Charter Web There are networks so secure their existence is classified. The Charter Web refers to private military networks physically separated from the public internet. The U.S. Department of Defense operates CIPRNet, a classified network handling secret-level information, completely air-gapped from the public internet. For top-secret communications, JWIX, used by the CIA and NSA. Access requires top-secret clearance and biometric authentication. NATO operates secure networks connecting 30 countries. Coalition networks like Centrix's link over 40 nations, all isolated encrypted infrastructure. When WikiLeaks published classified documents in 2010, they came from breaches of these networks. The Charter Web isn't a myth. It's real, massive, and completely invisible to the public internet. 10. Mariana's Web Named after Earth's deepest ocean trench, the Mariana's Web is said to be a quantum-locked digital abyss. Legend says accessing it requires a quantum computer running exotic algorithms, its contents supposedly encrypted beyond comprehension. Stories claim it holds the location of Atlantis, advanced AI, secret archives, even files hidden from the charter web. Iceberg diagrams circulating on Reddit and 4chan around 2011 or 2012 popularized it, depicting Mariana's web at the very bottom. Reality check. No credible evidence is real. Cybersecurity experts agree it's urban legend. But here's why the myth persists. Quantum computing is real. In December 2024, Google's Willow completed a calculation that would take supercomputers 10 septillion years. If quantum computers could break current encryption, what could they access? The Mariana's Web might not exist now, but the technology that could create it is emerging. That's what makes the legend compelling. 11. The Fog Imagine a part of the internet where AI operates autonomously, programs that think, learn, and act beyond human control. Some call it the fog, where sentient AI might exist, rewriting its own code and communicating in ways humans can't understand. In Cyberpunk 2077, there's the black wall, a barrier separating the safe internet from the old net, where rogue AIs roam. It's fiction, but inspired by real concerns. Researchers are working on self-learning AI and autonomous programs. If run on secret networks and isolated, a fog web could theoretically exist. The question isn't if AI will become more autonomous, it's when and who will control it. Right now, speculation, but the technology advances fast. 12. Virus Soup Beyond secret layers, there's a chaotic corner where corrupted code, abandoned botnets, and mutating malware roam. The virus soup. It's a digital graveyard where old viruses drift freely across exposed servers and misconfigured devices. Security researchers encounter it by accident, finding botnets still accepting commands years after creators abandon them. Forgotten servers in abandoned data centers where old viruses mutate endlessly. Malware designed for Windows XP still running on machines no one remembers. Botnets with millions of infected devices quietly waiting. Why can't governments erase it? The scale is massive. Infected machines sit in dozens of countries. Cleaning could break essential systems. Some parts are tolerated for intelligence purposes. The virus soup isn't myth. It's the internet's chaotic, unmanaged underbelly. 13. AI Web Now let's snap back to reality. The AI Web isn't theory. It's happening right now. ChatGPT can write articles or hold conversations that feel human. Deepfakes can place anyone into videos that never existed. In 2023, researchers found over 15% of Twitter accounts were likely bots, posting content to manipulate trends in public opinion. AI-generated news articles are already published by major outlets, some labeled, some not. How do you know if what you read was written by human or machine? The AI web is already intertwined with the public web, but it raises big questions. How do we know what's real? Who's controlling this content? How much of our perception is shaped by unseen algorithms? The AI web represents a shift from static information to machine-generated reality. Humans are no longer the sole creators. 14. Quantum Web There's one more layer so futuristic it seems almost impossible. The quantum web. When you send a message today, it travels through servers with some risk of interception. Even encrypted messages can be hacked with enough time. 
Now imagine the quantum web. Thanks to quantum encryption, the moment anyone tries to intercept, the message itself changes, making eavesdropping impossible. With quantum teleportation protocols, data could travel instantaneously with perfect security. This isn't science fiction. In 2016, China launched the world's first quantum satellite, demonstrating quantum key distribution over 1,200 kilometers. It worked. But the quantum web doesn't exist as a public network yet. It's experimental, limited to labs and government research. When it arrives, the way we send, store, and protect information changes completely. The question is, who will control it? 15. Primarch System The final layer, the Primarch System. The internet has become life itself. Entire economies, social systems, and personal lives rely on it. The Primarch System is the ultimate concept of control, a theoretical master key that could shut down networks, rewrite protocols, or restore the internet itself. It combines three imagined elements. One, an internet kill switch to stop networks instantly. Two, root access for total control over servers. Three, the original source code to rebuild or manipulate from the ground up. Technically, it doesn't exist. The internet is decentralized across millions of devices. Yet powerful governments and corporations hold partial control over critical networks. In the wrong hands, it could erase data or disrupt communications. Used responsibly, it could safeguard systems after disasters. The name Primark comes from Warhammer 40K, genetically engineered demigods created to lead humanity. The Primark system is the internet's version, a creation myth, a digital deity, the theoretical first protocol governing all others. It's mythology, but like all mythology, it reflects something real, our need to imagine supreme order behind chaos. Maybe it doesn't exist, maybe it does. But the fact that we imagine it tells us something about how we see technology, power, and ourselves. Each layer of the internet has its own story, but which one holds your memories? Was it the ancient web with dial-up sounds, or the first iPhone when the internet finally fit in your pocket? Let us know in the comments, and subscribe so you don't miss more deep dives into the digital world.